if, if we can talk about why these things work, like what is it about meat that makes it so beneficial or about nutrient density and bioavailability and all those types of things, making the changes and why the changes are important instead of just saying carbs are bad. That message can be off-putting to people when they hear us talk about these things. They hear, well, but how is a potato bad? I was never, you know, really a sports person growing up or anything like that, but I did have a period where once I decided to make a change in my life, I realized where I was and I wanted to get healthy. I started with fitness, so I got super in shape. So I opened up a CrossFit gym. I was a CrossFit coach. I did all these things, and then about five years into that, I still had issues. I had urgent bowels. I had bad skin. I had depression. I had uh, 18 different injuries and chronic pain issues. I couldn't work out a day without getting hurt. You know, I went from six days a week of exercise to if I could get two or three days a week, that was a good week for me because I just hurt so much all the time. And the fitness piece of it was great, but it wasn't answering all of the problems. It was, you know, I looked good for a while until I didn't. Then, you know, I started putting on weight again. I had lost 70 pounds and I put 40 pounds back on. It's like, what is going on? And then the combination of the nutrition with the fitness is really kind of what brought it all together. So that sounds kind of like similar, like you were already active and you could do stuff, but it wasn't until you got the nutrition right that it all kind of came together. And and that's the impact of what we eat. I like talking about concepts and principles of, of behind these things and why they're working. When I look at uh, one of the things, I think in the carnivore space, particularly, we tend to harp on herbs aren't essential. We don't need them or stay away from this. You you know, meat has everything you need. And we, we talk about the individual things, the components of what it means to be carnivore. But I, I think that can be off-putting to a lot of people, not having the connection and thinking like, well, I don't want to be carnivore, but I understand they're saying these things are working. If, if we can talk about why these things work, like what is it about meat that makes it so beneficial or about nutrient density and bioavailability and all those types of things, making the changes and why the changes are important instead of just saying carbs are bad. Right, because that message can be that message can be off-putting to people when they hear us talk about these things. They hear, well, but how is how is how is a potato bad? Right, and just on the surface of looking at that and trying to wrap their head around different things. So the difference between providing nutrition and providing energy and helping people understand that they're not the same thing. That energy is a byproduct of good nutrition, but it is not nutrition of itself. Assuming that we're talking about whole foods, right? That it's it tend to be carbs, right? Oxalates, anti-nutrients, those type of things, those because plant-based foods. Um, when we talk about processed foods, who knows? There's so many other things that go into that conversation. Because the more processed things, and a lot of people don't understand this, this is something um, conceptually too that people need to understand is processed food is always less nutritious, regardless of whether the label says fortified with includes whatever, like none of that, none of this that matters. I saw, um, I forget who it was, Craig McCloskey, potentially, I think it was on Instagram. That might've been him. He did a, uh, a video where he bought a box of cornflakes, took a mag, he put the cornflakes in a blender, put them in a bowl in water. And then took a magnet and took a magnet through all the water and all the iron came out of the, the, the frosted flakes and he brushed all the iron filings onto a napkin. If you if you go to the old school recipes, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Bill Schindler and the Modern Stone Age Kitchen and what he's doing. He makes sourdough bread that people who would normally be impacted with major insulin responses, gut issues, gluten responses, all those types of things. He's doing fermented sourdough bread that is based off of recipes that recipes that are 200 years old, right? Before we had all the industrial revolution and everything. And um, it's a game changer for people because there's so much, it's so much closer to what we would find. And it's prepared in a way where it's more bioavailable and it's got actual, actually some nutrition in it. So it's a whole different process. And that's one of the things I love about what he does, taking old, old methods and getting rid of the modern processing um, and doing things the old school way. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's gonna help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube. Go to bodyconfidentbook.com. Here's 
the things you need to change and here's where I think you should start. Some of it's simply just building some habits. We, we get people that come from different places. Maybe it's a habit they need to change. Maybe it's a choice that they're making. Maybe they're not doing uh, enough physical activity. Maybe they need to increase their protein. Like the list of things that people could change in their lives to improve is huge. The impact they have is greater if you have a foundation laid first. If you're still eating standard American diet and then you go and you get this thing and you say, I need this special vitamin A to get my ox, to get my, this enzyme down. Okay, great, but you're doing all this other stuff. What's the point? It doesn't have to be too big. We talked about this when we talked before. It's that one step over the comfort zone line. It doesn't have to be a leap over. Like a lot of people see, oh, you got to get outside your comfort zone. So they think you have to take this running start and jump as far across the outside the comfort zone as possible. When really you just take one step over and you're, you're out. You've done something different. You made a change, like you've moved in that direction. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.